I've gone north of the border to Scotland for today's video, where I'm exploring two old churches in Leith, a heavily developed port area north of Edinburgh, which expanded around the natural harbour formed by the mouth of the water of Leith. Land to the west bank of the Winding River was largely owned by the Abbey of Holyrood in Edinburgh since the Middle Ages, and development of what is now loosely called North Leith began in 1493 when Abbot Robert Bellenden bridged the river and founded St Ninian's Chapel. St Ninian's Chapel still survives and is for my money one of the most interesting historic buildings in Leith. But to get a sense of the layout of this area took some concentration as I walked around the perambulations. You can access the former St Ninian's Chapel and other landmarks by following the Water of Leith path, which I really recommend. Later on in this walk around Leith, I'll visit another historic church on Constitution Street, one of Leith's straight and wide Georgian streets through the old town on the other side of the river. St Ninian's Manse, Old St Ninian's, or North Leith Church and Manse, as it's variously described, was redeveloped by the Scottish Historic Buildings Trust between 1996 and 2002 to create desirable waterfront accommodation and office space within. The development retained the exterior facade, and the remains of the chapel stand out from the quayside mills to which it's attached. The church was founded in circa 1493 by Abbot Robert Bellenden, rebuilt 1595, rebuilt again 1736, and eventually, in 1825, it became a granary. The stair tower facing away from the river was added in 1675, and together with the four-storey block of the attached complex formed a part of the old church, though much more of this was demolished during the 19th century when the site was converted to industrial use as a mill. It is a beautiful building, and a hidden gem of Leith. In fact, and although this part of Leith isn't as unattractive as some of the neighbouring areas, I still don't think the term hidden gem has ever been more appropriate. This reminded me of many of the attractive buildings I visited in the old town around the Abbey Church in Dunfermline over the Firth of the Forth. But next I headed southeast of the river, crossing over into what felt like the more commercial Georgian and Victorian town, passing the assembly rooms and other grand shop and business fronts, down Constitution Road to South Leith Parish Church on Kirkgate. South Leith Parish Church is described as stodgy Gothic. It has some qualities of the less flattering, heavy-handed, mid-century Gothic revival. The building itself is not entirely the product of its major rebuilding by the architect Thomas Hamilton in the mid-19th century, but it incorporates a late 15th century nave. The original chancel and crossing of the larger late medieval church were lost in the 16th century. The West Tower was once an attractive feature of 17th century date, and it was rebuilt twice in the 17th century before being entirely replaced in the 1830s because it was deemed to be unsafe. Eventually, much more of the church was altered to what we see today. The church is normally open to visitors on a weekly basis, but not on the day I visited. Otherwise, I would have really liked to have seen the 15th century nave arcades and the awesome nave roof structure with angels. Nothing else of great antiquity survives relating to the building itself, so I spent some time looking around the kirkyard at the headstones, a number of which date back to the mid-17th century, far older than the external fabric of the church itself. There are monuments with symbols of mortality, memento mori, local trade, with skulls, hourglasses. I'm reminded of 1 Corinthians 1552, which reads, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall rise again incorruptible. In the shadow of the kirkyard and the buried dead of Leith, with the bodies of sailors, workmen, traders, businessmen and their relatives, loomed the east face elevation of Kirkgate House, an 18-storey tower block built from 1964 onwards, which contains 64 flats. The design of its elevation mimics the design of a burial monument, the profile of the inner design is stepped and vertical in much the same way as a traditional monument made by a monumental mason. It's like the living is overlooking the dead. There is probably something to reflect deeper in this observation, but my time was up. As if in anticipation of the end of the video, on my way out I passed a sign with a very helpful summary of the church's history. 
This board makes some extraordinary claims, none of which I have any reason to doubt as a casual visitor. For example, that the roof was modelled on St Isaac's Church in Leningrad, a church I'm not familiar with, but after googling it, I still don't quite understand the reference point. Maybe St Isaac's Church is one to visit in the future? Maybe not. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you can join me next time, or in the meantime, enjoy one of my other videos. 